Hello everybody, this is Michael Lee. We are continuing our saga of processing that black oak. So we got it limbed and bucked, here's the firewood rounds. And I'm making a step-by-step -step instructions video on how to rip firewood. Now this black oak's a relatively hard wood, so it takes a while to get your cut going, get your kerf going, but we're gonna rip this. I'm gonna show you two techniques, starting your kerf with the tip, uh, and starting your kerf, your cut, with uh, the base of your bar. And I'm going to show you the postures, the stances, the techniques, and also how to prevent um, your chain from hitting the dirt so you can keep your uh, chain sharp. Now, it's really important to have a somewhat powerful chainsaw with a long bar and a sharp chain if you're ripping. Otherwise, it's going to be too hard on your body and the machine. Now, after you start ripping, I've been ripping for about... 20 minutes already and you can see how nice the pieces of black oak look they're nice and smooth and clean looking when you rip them compared to splitting them by hand or with a or with a log splitter right look how nice that looks really beautiful you can eat off that anyways after you start ripping for a few minutes you'll end up with a big pile of wood chips they're kind of longer and stringier than usual when you're ripping compared to cutting wood normal. And you can kind of just keep piling them up so you have a nice bed to lay your firewood rounds. And that way if you accidentally push your uh, chain or drop your chain through the wood, you'll just hit this big pile of uh, uh, wood chips and uh, uh, your chain will still be sharp. So. Got my maul, just in case. Let's get it. Yep. Set up your first round on your bed of wood chips. And I'll show you starting with the tip first. Okay, everybody, the first way I'm going to show you on how to rip firewood rounds is beginning with the tip. So learn how to use your tip and we'll start here once the cut the kerf is developed then you can start to go deeper and pull back all the way finishing here and then it's all about feel when you feel your tip go through the wood it will kind of just come apart naturally you'll hit our bed of wood chips beneath and then done okay the second way I'm going to show you is starting with the base you squat down with good posture right squat down and you start with the base once your kerf once your cut is developed flatten it out go deeper and then stand up and finish once again with your tip
have to be really careful to not shoot the wood into your shin. You really have to learn how to use your tip. Now we're going to rip beginning with the base, and this is my preferred method. Uh, it's a little bit more vigorous on your body, but there's less likelihood that you can kick the wood back into your shins, okay? Uh, I just noticed that my rakers are set a little bit too low, and I think a couple of them are off. I'm getting a little bit of chatter, so uh, ripping with the tip didn't work as well as I, as I thought. But at least you guys got the idea. All right, start with the base.
to explain something quick I have my rakers set too low and I think one or two of them uh, are set way too low and I'm getting some chatter so making these rips starting with my tip ain't working out too good it just feels like I'm gonna pull the kick the wood back into my shins and you don't want to do that unless you want like a golf ball sized lump on your shins uh, so if you want to do that ripping technique that I showed you initially, starting with the tip, make sure your chain's sharp, your cutters are sharp, and then your rakers are set just a tiny bit below the cutters. I mean, just a tiny bit. And uh, then the, the starting with the tip technique will work for you. Okay? It's just not working for me right now. It's, I got too much chatter, and I'm pulling the wood back into my shins, so... I'm just gonna do the base, starting with the base, and then finishing with the tip uh, from here on out. When you're done with the base and you have your kerf set, stand up just like you're standing up from a low bar squat in the gym, and then it's safer to finish with your tip way down here, 
just in case you get kicked back. You know, it's got way too far to travel before it hits you, right? That's the advantage of having a long bar compared to a short bar. When you're working with a short bar, if you get kicked back, it's closer to your face. So, learn how to file, keep your chain sharp, keep your rakers set properly, learn how to use a long bar, learn how to use your tip. Little one. 